So here we are at the end of another year, which means it's time for me to count down my top 10 favorite movies of 2022. I know I haven't really been active on this channel this year. I think the last video I put out was actually my top 10 of last year, but I figured now is as good a time as any to bring this channel back and to talk about some movies that I love that came out throughout this year. Also, I realized recently that I haven't missed making this video for the past seven years, so I really want to keep that going. I always have so much fun making these videos and it's just a great excuse to talk about the very best that we saw in film throughout the whole year. With that being said, let's talk about 2022 as a whole for film. Once again, kind of a letdown. I feel like I've been saying that for the past couple of years, but for me, I think 2019 was just such an amazing year for movies. There was so much great stuff that came out that year. And I just feel like I've been chasing that high ever since. And we haven't gotten a year that's lived up to that year in film since then. I just feel like it was another year where there was a handful of movies that I was really excited about and really looking forward to that just didn't quite live up to those expectations. But all that being said, there were some absolutely terrific films that came out this year, and a lot of them that kind of snuck up on me and came out of nowhere. But with all that out of the way, let's talk about the best films that came out in 2022. These are all my personal picks. They have no bearing on any extraneous categories like box office or how many of these films are gonna win the most Oscars or which ones were critically acclaimed. These are just the films that I saw this year that I enjoyed the most. With all that being said, let's get right into it with my honorable mentions. These are some films that I really loved that came out this year, but for me personally, didn't quite squeak into my top 10. Elvis, one of the better musical biopics I've seen in a while. Baz Luhrmann's style really worked for telling this story and Austin Butler's performance as the king is absolutely unforgettable. Prey is the best thing that's happened to the Predator franchise in years. Dan Trachenberg really just got the suspense and the tension and the action so right. I really wish this got a theatrical release, but if you do have access to Hulu, please check it out. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. Even though the story isn't really anything new and it kind of borrows from a lot of other movies, I don't care. This is one of the sweetest little movies I have ever seen, and I adore this character. Women Talking is definitely a film that you're going to be hearing a lot about around Oscar season. Really great performances all across the board, a very emotional story, and one of my favorite scores of the year. I had absolutely zero expectations for Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, but it ended up being hands down the biggest surprise of the year. It's my favorite animated movie of 2022, beautiful animation, extremely entertaining, a great villain. I actually think it's better than anything that Pixar has been putting out for the past few years. It's that good. I'm just gonna do these as a two in one. X and Pearl. Ty West's new horror franchise is one of my favorite things that's happened to the genre in a long time. X was such a great throwback to 1970s slasher movies and had this great creepy atmosphere to it while also being a ton of fun. And Pearl somehow retroactively made it better when it explored the origin of that character. Mia Goth is amazing in both of these. I loved these movies and I really can't wait for the next installment. The Banshees of Inna Sharon features two of the best performances of the year from Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson. Martin McDonough found a way to make this movie dark, funny, and touching in a way that all felt seamless. And finally, Glass Onion, which I didn't think was quite as good as that original film, but it was superbly entertaining and constantly engaging. Ryan Johnson did it again and reminds us that he knows exactly what he's doing when it comes to translating the whodunit genre into modern day, and I cannot wait to see what he does with the next one. I loved all those movies, and you should definitely check them out if you haven't seen any of them. But at the end of the day, there were just 10 other films that resonated with me more. So without further ado, let's talk about those films, starting off with my number 10 pick. The Menu is a brilliant satire that takes aim at just about everyone when it comes to the food industry. Avant-garde chefs that are obsessed with their craft, food critics, Mark Milod spares no one in this darkly funny, extremely unpredictable story that constantly had me on the edge of my seat. Ray Fiennes is incredible here. He's so menacing. Every time he's on screen, you have no idea what insane thing he's about to do. And I loved his chemistry with Anya Taylor-Joy. They're constantly playing these mind games and trying to understand each other, which comes to a really satisfying conclusion towards the end of the film. But another thing I love about this movie is how you really can apply its message to any medium. It could be about the film industry or the music industry. At its core, it's really just about that line between love and obsession in art. And beyond how wildly entertaining and hilarious it is as a movie, it'll probably keep you thinking long after you see it. I've been hearing about Avatar 2 for most of my life at this point. And after 13 years of waiting, we finally got it. And I think 
however you feel about the quality of this movie, we probably can all agree that James Cameron has yet again made a film that is quite literally what the theater experience was made for. This is without a doubt one of the best looking films I have ever seen, and seeing it in IMAX 3D made it look even better because you just feel like you're there. The flight sequences, everything underwater, the painstaking detail that went into every frame of this movie makes it one of the most immersive experiences I've ever had with a movie. But on a story level, I actually liked a lot of what they did. Jake Sully was a much more interesting character this time around, and I loved seeing him as a father. The last hour is just white-knuckled action. It puts every big comic book movie of the last decade to shame. This was just such an amazing experience. I saw it twice and was consistently blown away by what I was looking at on screen. And if this movie showed us anything, it's that you never bet against James Cameron. Another amazing theater experience. Jordan Peele's Nope is a spectacle in every sense of the word. His inspiration from the films of Steven Spielberg really showed with this movie as I was getting a lot of Close Encounters and Jaws vibes, but Hoyta Van Hoytma's breathtaking cinematography is really what made this movie for me. The nighttime sequences are some of the best I've ever seen in film. They just look absolutely stunning. The way they capture that feeling of this massive, unexplainable thing in the air was astounding. And they used it to say some really interesting things about how we perceive a spectacle and how that thing can be taken advantage of. Kiki Palmer is amazing here. She's so charismatic and likable. And I hope we start seeing her in more stuff after this. Daniel Kaluuya, as always, is great, as well as Steven Yeun. I also really loved how this movie was a love letter to crew and the behind-the-scenes unsung heroes of movies. That was a really nice touch. I had a great time with Nope, if you can't already tell, and I think it's one of Jordan Peele's best films to date. RRR. Wow, this movie is insane. And it's also some of the most fun I've had watching a movie in my entire life. It has some of the craziest action sequences ever put to film. You get dudes piggybacked while shooting people left and right, people flying through the air shooting bows and arrows, spears, there's a fight with a tiger. It's so over the top and campy, and it feels like it could have come out in the 1980s with how absurd it is, but it knows that, and it embraces it, which makes it just so much goddamn fun. But on top of all the action, there's a really great emotional core here between our two main characters. You see how their friendship comes about and then how that relationship is tested. And I was surprised at just how much I was really invested in that storyline. There's also some dance sequences that are incredibly well choreographed. This movie has just about everything. It's just a wild, bombastic, crazy ride. And I'm glad it did really well on Netflix because hopefully it'll turn people on to more foreign films in the future. Hollywood, take note, because RRR is some absolutely incredible action movie filmmaking that gives American cinema a run for its money. After several decades telling stories behind the camera, Steven Spielberg finally got to tell his own story with The Fablemans, and I thought this film was just wonderful. Although it's a semi-autobiographical story, from what I've read, a lot of what happened in this movie is actually true, just told through the eyes of a fictional character in the form of young Sammy Fableman. You see how he first got into filmmaking as a kid, and how a lot of what was happening in his family life influenced him as an artist, and turned him into the filmmaker that we know him as today. It's a deeply personal story for him, and I'm so glad he was able to tell it the way he wanted to, and in typical Spielberg fashion, it is pristinely written, directed, and acted. Michelle Williams gives one of the best performances of the year, as well as Gabriel LaBelle as Sammy Fableman, who I think has a really promising career ahead of him. At its core, it's a movie about following your dreams and doing what fulfills you as an artist. And as someone who hopes to go into film one day and is about to be pursuing a career in the industry, this movie really just served as the inspiration that I needed towards the end of the year. The Northman is a film that not a lot of people are talking about right now. It seems like when it came out, there was a lot of buzz surrounding it, but then that kind of just died off as the year went on. But I love this movie. It's so brutal and bloody, and Robert Eggers just does such an amazing job at immersing you into this Viking revenge tale. From the production design to the imagery and some expertly crafted battle sequences, he really makes you feel like you're in it. And for this kind of subject matter, considering how much money was thrown at the screen, I feel like we just don't get a lot of movies like this anymore with this level of creative vision. 
And to have seen it executed as brilliantly as this movie did it on screen was really amazing. Some really great performances here, in particular Alexander Skarsgård and Nicole Kidman, who surprisingly has a really great monologue, which I still think is one of the best scenes of the year. And no other film from 2022 has a duel with two guys fighting naked on a volcano. I mean, what more could you want? That scene was just glorious, along with the rest of the film. I was a huge fan of The Northman. Robert Eggers is three for three with me right now. And if you haven't seen it, please go check it out because it is some great original filmmaking. Now we get to this year's heavy hitters. Tar is an absolutely brilliant meditation on power, ego, and what happens when an artist gets so consumed with their own image to the point where it leads to their downfall. At its center, this is really a character study on composer-conductor Lydia Tar. Kate Blanchett gives what I think is the best performance of the year as one of the most fascinating fictional characters I've ever seen in a movie. She is miraculous in this film and just completely vanishes into this character. The movie opens with an interview with her as she describes her work and her perspective as an artist. And even though it was just two people talking for an extended period of time, I was completely transfixed on the screen just because watching her talk is so engaging. But the thing I love most about this movie is that it does not force feed you anything. Todd Field directs in such a way that is extremely subtle and every scene and conversation is meticulously crafted in such a way for the audience to really have to decipher what's going on under the surface. Nothing is just said outright and the real message of this movie lies underneath. And this movie had the guts to go into a subject that I haven't seen many movies do, and that is cancel culture, and the idea of separating the art from the artist and where we draw that line. But it doesn't tell us how to feel about it. It just presents both sides of that argument and explores what that conversation is really about. And it especially does that with my favorite scene in the whole movie, an incredible one-take scene that happens pretty early on in the film, one of the best scenes of the year. Top Gun Maverick is not only one of the best sequels ever made, it's also one of the best movie theater experiences I've ever had. With this movie, Tom Cruise and his production team reminded us all how important it is to see movies on the biggest screen with the loudest sound possible, and gave us an entertaining thrill ride that is worlds better than the original in every way. The in-camera visuals of fighter jets in the air flying off of aircraft carriers, doing death-defying flips and maneuvers, and the fact that a lot of it is real gives this film a layer of authenticity that few other action movies have. But aside from the spectacle of it all, there was some great character work in the movie, and in particular, I loved the interplay between Tom Cruise and Miles Teller. And I loved how it was such a cultural event when it came out. People were going crazy for it, it was selling out every weekend, it brought back a huge chunk of movie-going audiences that haven't been going back to the theater since before COVID, and that was such a fun thing to be a part of. Top Gun Maverick is probably the most entertaining film of the year. It has great performances, great action sequences, beautiful cinematography, and it gave me an experience that I will never forget. I am a diehard Batman fan, so when I heard that Matt Reeves was signing on to direct the next iteration of the character, I was extremely excited. And luckily, he did not disappoint in any way. The Batman was absolutely riveting from start to finish. One of my favorite things this movie did is how it fleshed out Gotham City and made it feel like a living, breathing world and really showed us the grimy, seedy underworld of it all. The atmosphere is so great. And I loved how the film was structured like a detective movie. As we followed Bruce Wayne uncovering clues left behind by the Riddler, it really felt fresh and was giving me Seven and Zodiac vibes, which that mix with the character of Batman kind of gave me everything I wanted. Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman was perfect casting, and her character is where a lot of the movie's emotion came in. And Robert Pattinson as Batman proved all the naysayers wrong. He is fantastic as Bruce Wayne, and establishes so much of the character just through his facial expressions alone. And Michael Giacchino's magnificent score gave me some of my favorite music in a Batman movie ever. I adored the Batman, everything from the action sequences to the performances, the cinematography, the music. Matt Reeves completely knocked it out of the park, and I can't wait to see what's next for this universe. So at this point, you may have guessed what my number one film of the year is, but there really is no other movie this year that I enjoyed more than the one I'm about to talk about. It was creative and original, and had a really heartfelt, emotional story, and it just didn't disappoint me in a single way. And that movie is... 
I have never seen anything like Everything Everywhere all at once. This movie is an absolute game changer. This is the second time since I started this channel where a film by the Daniels has taken the number one spot in my year-end video. They continue to create completely original, exciting movies that feel unlike anything that have come before them. Looking past all the amazing comedy and action, at its core, this is a really heartfelt, beautiful story about the importance of kindness and being grateful for the life you live and rejecting nihilism, which is a message that I think a lot of us could really use right now. And lucky for us, it was wrapped in an insanely entertaining package filled with a multiverse, hot dog hands, sentient rocks, and raccoons. Michelle Yeoh gives an amazing performance. I really love this character and thought her relationship with her daughter and how that changes throughout the film was really beautiful. Another great comeback in this movie came from Ki Hee Kwan from The Goonies and Indiana Jones. After 30 some years, he's back on screen in this role and he was just so charming and endearing. I cannot even begin to imagine the amount of work that went into this film in terms of having to switch back and forth between all these different universes, and in a lot of cases, in the same scene. It actually blows my mind just thinking about it. And even though this isn't some huge comic book or sci-fi movie, what they were able to accomplish here on a technical level is just astounding. Everything Everywhere All at Once blew me away. I've seen it four times now, and not once has it dragged or even slowed down just a little bit for me. I think it really reminds us of the power of original films and what creative inventive films can do. I adore this movie and will be watching it and re-watching it forever. And if you haven't checked it out, please do yourself a favor and go see it because it is my favorite film of 2022. All right, everybody. So those are my favorite movies of 2022. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I know it's been a long time, but the fact that any of you sat down and clicked on this video and actually wanted to hear what I had to say about all these movies, that really means the world to me. On that note, my next video is probably gonna be a most anticipated of 2023 video. There's a lot of really great looking films coming out in 2023, and I would love to just sit here and talk about them, so be on the lookout for that. I'm probably gonna get that up soon. And what were your favorite movies of the year? I would love to hear your picks down in the comments below, so please feel free to sound off there. Did you agree with my list? Did you think I was forgetting some really good ones? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments down below, and I hope you guys all have a great new year. Really looking forward to 2023 and hopefully getting on this channel a lot more often. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.